Get into our first topic, though, after a quick word from FanDuel. You can get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to shoot your shot. FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NBA. And today's winning FanDuel ticket comes from Dogecoin McRiblets. Of course. Who hit a four-part parlay on UFC 299 this weekend. Oh, wow. Hmm. A money line four-part parlay turned six bucks into a hundred bucks. So shout out to Dogecoin McRiblets. If you have a winning ticket, send it in. We'll feature it on the show, and you can bet on anything with FanDuel. So continue to bet is responsibly. This, is he your cousin? No, but it's a great name. Yeah. Don't you yeah. McRiblets, McRiblets is a great McRiblets, name. McRiblets. McNuggets. You sure you're not related to him down the McNugget free, uh, tree family? Maybe, but uh, no, I, I am unfamiliar with who Dogecoin McRiblets actually is. It's a great name. It is a great name. So shout out to you, Dogecoin McRiblets, a real And one. congrats. And by, congrats. By right, the let's way. Let's start with this, though, guys. Well, real quick. Yeah. Go Jerry ahead. Judy, because we just a free agency plenty coming up. But the Browns did start off the offseason by making a major splash mm-hmm. on Saturday. Kind of came out of, the, out of nowhere. I mean, we had talked about Jerry Judy in multiple iterations last offseason. Yeah at the trade deadline in 2023. But now, for a fifth and sixth round draft pick in this upcoming 2024 draft, the Browns have acquired Jerry Judy, a former first round pick. Bull, you did a podcast on it. Earl, you and I went live. Jay, we haven't heard your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, initial impressions, initial thoughts on the Browns acquiring Bulls, Jerry Bulls Judy. Yeah, to say real quick, me. I just want to say, this is how popular the Browns are. That they traded for a receiver, and these guys went and did a breaking news show live on Saturday. At last check, it had 30,000 views. That's insane. I did a podcast on it Saturday. At last check, it had almost 14,000 views. So 44 between the two shows And we're seven on a months weekend. from our next game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. It, it really is nuts. Yeah. But, I mean, if anybody – I was when I was in Arizona, I was talking to somebody who used to live in Cleveland, and he watches the show, and he said, yeah, I noticed that uh, – you guys really are – it's like the ultimate Brown sports show. And he was a big Guardians fan. He was yeah. there at spring training. And I said, we're the ultimate Cleveland sports show, but let's face it. He goes, you know, when I left Cleveland in the mid-'90s for Arizona, it wasn't that way. And I go, well, no, the Browns were about to leave. Yeah. And the Guardi- or the Indians were flipping the switch. Yeah. And they were, they were about to become the relevant team. He's like, yeah, but there's no denying it now. Like, I can just tell by the amount of Guardians news you do compared to the amount of Browns news. It's a Browns town. Whether anybody likes it or not, it doesn't doesn't matter. matter. It is. And and the the fans go nuts for any little nugget. My, my, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. So, I don't know where you guys are on this. But I wasn't, like, doing backflips over this move. Uh, I'm glad we have them. We didn't, you know, we didn't give up a lot to get them. But we only have them for 17 games. So I don't really think that this is I, – I, I'm pleased for next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it does buy them time to bridge – to build a bridge to when they do have a wide receiver room that we like. Not just the front office, but mm-hmm. a wide receiver room that we like. Uh, is the wide receiver room better? Unquestionably. Jerry Judy's a guy who is still – you can't talk about his transition from Alabama to the NFL without saying potential. And so he's still a guy that hasn't tapped into all of that potential that we thought was there. But for some reason, he's been an enigma. We, 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 the production doesn't match what we think is the skill set. So for me, I'm, I'm glad. I'd rather have him than not. And we pissed away fifth and sixth round picks in the past. Sure. These two picks, we turned into something that we know is a tangible player. We, we don't, he's not a superstar, but he's, he's better than any wide receiver we have not another Alabama alum. So, I mean, from that standpoint, I think the room got better, but I, I like it. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I like it. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you. Uh, I would, I'd give it a, a B overall. I can't give it an A because he's not a superstar. Right. He's a good player. Does it bother you that they only have him for, for the one year? It doesn't. In fact, I like it. because part of the reason I like it right now because let's say he has a great season. Right. Yeah, it'll cost you more to sign him. But if he has a great season, you got first dibs at him. 
whether it's franchising him I know or you whatever do, you want to do. That would be, I mean, I don't see him going into the franchise realm, do you? Probably not, but I'm just right. saying, let's say he has a magnificent season. He has 1,400 yards, something crazy happens. Then you do, I get then that. Then you have, you have some, by being the team that has him, if, if they had given up a lot for him, I'd be like, well, I don't know, maybe. But a fifth and sixth round pick to me is nothing. essentially nothing. They have other fifth and sixth round picks. They do. He's been a good, solid player. The potential is the big word. I like that he's with – Amari Cooper was basically his idol. He's, yeah. he, is, he has said that the reason he, one of the reasons he went to Alabama is because of Amari Cooper. So I think Amari Cooper, who's a rock-solid NFL guy and player, will be a good influence for him. I agree. Now, his inconsistency, I know the Broncos play-by-play -play guy was on with Ken and Lima this morning. He talked about, hey, he's inconsistent in terms of holding on to the ball. You don't love to hear that. But he's a good route runner. He's got very good speed. I think, worst case scenario, he's an 800-yard receiver. Which and would that's make him number two. Make him number two, room. no doubt. He is a legitimate number two receiver with, I think, the potential upside to be a bottom-tier number one guy. I think he's somewhere probably between 30 and 40 in the NFL, which is way better than Elijah Moore, who's between 60 and 80 in the NFL. But is he better than David Bell? It's close, <laughs> but I'm going to have to say yes. <laughs> it's a stretch. Yeah. What do you think? You know, I came back down here yesterday. I did another show yesterday. Mm -hmm. Fed the City at 1.30, a follow-up on Jerry Judy. And then the title of my show was Why I Believe That He Can Reach His Full Potential Here in Cleveland. Wow. I really like the trade. I gave the trade an A before you go crazy on me. This is why. The Browns had two fifth-round picks, two sixth-round picks. Sure. You parted with two of those, and you still have a fifth and a sixth to use at your disposal. You're getting a dude who's been in the NFL for four years that was a first-round pick. There's a lot of potential there, the word that we continue to use, yeah. a lot of untapped potential there. But he fits the build of what the Cleveland Browns are trying to do this year. 6-1, uh, ran a 4-4-40 in a 40-yard in a dash during the combine. He's a vertical threat. Since 2022, he has 10 receptions of 40 yards or more. Amari Cooper has 12. So now you have two targets on the outside that can stretch the field and hopefully create space underneath for guys like Elijah Moore, David Bell, et cetera. I think this is a, a low, low risk, high reward type of move. Yeah, you have him for one year, but Andrew Berry has been uh, proven to be able to work some magic in the past. So, you know, I read an article by Mary Kay Cabot to where he can add some void years, restructure that 12.9 million, turn it into like a roster bonus. So there's a potential that he's here longer than just the one year. Let but me, let me ask you this on that, because I read that too. Are, are you willing to roll the dice and offer an extension to Judy before you see him in a Browns? No, I would not. No, I, no, I, I want to see either. him play. Okay, I, I do see too. Him play. I do too. I want to see him play. I mean, I, maybe you can have that conversation in October, but if he's having a great right. year, he's going to want to hit the market. Right, but I want to see him in his in his I contract do too. year. Yeah, I, just think I do too. You know, he's 24 years old. He'll be 25 next month. So yeah. there's some immaturity issues. Young. There's some issues with him being consistent, but I think – you know, often, just like in real life, when you get a fresh start, a fresh opportunity in a new place, you know, it kind of like revitalizes you. It sure. revamps your energy. You're going to be in a locker room that has a solid culture. You got guys like Joe Batonio in that locker room. You got guys like Wyatt Teller in that locker room, Miles Garrett. And then, you know, you got the head coach, Kevin Stefanski, who's even keel to where it's not cliche in Cleveland. They actually adapt the attitude of the coach. Yeah. And all of that can only help him. We all know the, the situation with Amari Cooper. You, I call him OG. When you got an OG in the room that you respect, like it, it does everything it can to help you off the field and on the field. And so if he could go out there and prove himself, the Browns might have a steal. Yeah. That's a big might, but they might have a steal. I think when we, you know, at this point, once T. Higgins and Michael Pittman got franchised and Mike Evans re-signed with Tampa. Which we expected all those moves right. to happen. You looked at what was best. We, we all said they had to get an upgrade at wide receiver, too. Yeah. Well, who were the options? Mike Williams, Calvin Ridley, and Marquise Brown. And I think this guy is right there in that same group. There's a right. group of, like, 12 guys, 14 guys, whatever it might be, that are in that tier of upper-end twos, maybe if they play at their best, lower-end ones. You know, and, and he's got as much potential as any of them because he's younger than all those guys. I like that part of it yes. a lot. Yeah. I do. Now, granted, it might just be a one-year vacation for him here, but if they can come to some sort of an agreement after the season without franchising him, because I don't 
I mean, yeah, I look, doubt it goes it, that way. That'd be a problem they would love to have. Yes, sure. So I, I, I what I like about Andrew Barry is I, I kind of liken this to the Amari Cooper trade. Uh, now, granted, the skill set isn't as high, right? But he was a player who I think his team had sort of felt he had hit a glass ceiling. They wrote him off. They said he was Dallas. Yeah. Dallas felt he was done. Uh, I think Denver, I don't know that Denver necessarily thinks he's done, but they think they got the most out of him that they could. Right. Now, and they need to clear a lot of cap because of Russell Wilson's situation. That, that boy, yeah. that move, man, oh, yeah. man, did that yeah. leave a dent. Right. So, it, that actually played into Andrew Barry's hands. I started thinking after I read about the trade, when Barry, I wish he would have pulled the trigger on it last year. I don't know what the asking price was last year. I would like love they to know. They wanted a second-round pick last year. Right? I was sure that it was second Supposedly. because I'd also heard Yeah, I'd also yeah. heard that it was a fourth and a fifth yeah, I don't at know. the end. Well, if it was a fourth and a fifth, they should have done it. I don't know. I haven't. Yeah. Nobody else. I, I read that there were rumors that it was the. It started at a second and it yeah. ended as a fourth and a fifth. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, yeah. we didn't get him. We didn't yeah. get him. That's fine. It's water under the bridge. But I, what I like about Andrew Barry is when he did the Amari Cooper move, I think everybody was excited because he was a name and he was a he was a name brand, mm-hmm. and we knew about his time at Alabama. And this is kind of Amari Cooper light, really. He's he's got the same pedigree from Alabama. He, I think Amari had stamped his NFL credentials better. Yeah, he, he was, he was older more of a proven player. More proven, yeah. yeah, but um, this could be a trade where you're getting Amari Cooper three years before you got Amari Cooper, and we might be Absolutely. able to. He, we might be able to reap the benefits of him developing because I do think there are yeah. maturity issues. I've talked to friends that covered the Broncos, mm-hmm. and they yeah. said, "Look, no individual stories, yeah. but." T- I, we would be remiss if we didn't tell you that there was some baggage while, did while he was here. Did you talk to Schlereth? I did not. Okay. I call, did you I, see I, his video? I, I texted him. No, what did he say? I mean, he he just <clears throat> went, he just destroyed him in a video. Oh, did he really? Yeah, I mean, he said, I don't remember the exact words that he used, but he just, he crushed him in a video. He Mark, said, is, he a, Mark is a said, team guy, like a, yeah, yeah. A, a, a chemistry guy. Yeah. Very important. He had some incredible things that he told me that I've never even repeated about Maurice Claret that I've talked to Maurice about, and he said yeah. those were absolutely true. Yeah. But, but, I think Schlereth is a guy that he's a was always a good locker room guy, was always a good chemistry guy. His concerns about him would scare me. Mecklenburg came out, I saw, and crushed Russell Wilson. And Mecklenburg wow. was this was the yeah. kind of counterpart to Schlereth. Yeah, you know, on the defensive side. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a red flag. Yeah, to yeah. Me. I, I, I really do trust Stink. Yeah. If Mark says it. It's probably but, but he's, true. He's, tw- he's 24 years old, and I don't know too many people that's 24 years old that don't have some maturity issues. I think the difference between he and I at 24 years old is my life was not put on public display on a consistent basis. Sure. And so I had the opportunity to mature and grow up for the most part yeah, behind out of the, the scenes. And so, like, yeah, there is some maturity issues there, but, you know, I kind of lean on the side of let's just hope being in this environment helps him grow up, helps yeah. him mature. Yeah. I can't let that scare me away because if realistically, what 24-year-old don't have issues with maturity? Yeah, no, it's true. funny to think about the Browns being a good environment because for decades, they wasn't. they've been a bad environment. Toxic. You're right, but I yeah. think, you know, I I think, think that goes back to Jarvis right Landry. Yeah. One of the things that the Browns credited Jarvis for when, when they decided not to bring him back was the fact that he helped turn the culture around with this yeah. organization. And I think yeah. it has stayed in the direction Jarvis pointed it. And it hasn't flipped back the other way. Let's hope it doesn't. Well, they've had um, stability here for a little bit for the first time in a while. No, that that's helps. true. Uh, yeah. Another thing you said that I thought about, and I told Mike this, you, you mentioned, you know, Denver might have felt like they got the most out of Jerry Judy there. And I likened that to a player like Marshawn Lynch when he was drafted by Buffalo. Sure. And there were some maturity issues <laughs> and things really didn't work out there. He ends up in Seattle and he turns into beast mode. Yeah. Probably a future Hall of Fame running back, yeah. definitely a Super Bowl champion. And so sometimes when you get that second chance in a new city with a new team, that that switch can flip. I think Amar having Amari as a role model, I think he's yeah. his role model as a player. Yeah. Hey Jay, I real think- quick, on that, it goes back further than just Bama. They're both from South Florida. Oh, I know. No, yeah, I know and, the time. Judy idolized Amari since his freshman year of high school. That was the guy he wanted to emulate his entire game yeah. after right. on him to Bama and then emulated what he did at Alabama almost to but copy and paste We're talking about on the gridiron. No, no, I, I know. I'm just saying I'm it, talking it goes about way back there. He's never had a chance to spend time around him. Right. On this, you know, what my hope is, is that he watches how he comports himself and he watches how, Amari Cooper is a pro's pro. Definitely. You know, he's a Nick Chubb. He, he goes about his business. Yeah. He doesn't make a lot of waves. Mm-hmm. He just makes plays. And my hope is that 
once Jerry Judy goes through training camp and he gets a look at his idol up close and yeah. gets to eyeball him, he'll realize that, oh, there's a second piece to being the player you are. Yeah. And it's how you handle yourself in practice. It's how you handle yourself in the locker room. It's yeah. how you handle yourself with your teammates and in public. My hope is that Amari Cooper takes him under his wing, not as a football player, but as yeah, a young sure. professional and teaches him how to be a pro. He can make a ton of money if he does this the right way. Yeah, no doubt about it. Because if he has a great season this year, he's going to get a huge contract because he was a first-round pick and he's still very young. But he's right now, like if I'm Jerry Judy, <clears throat> I'm thinking, man, this is embarrassing. I just got traded. I, got, I was a first-round pick. I've been a, I've been I, maybe bust is too strong, but I've been a disappointment in the NFL. He's never had a thousand yards, and I was given away for nothing. And people don't believe in me, so I want to prove well, what, myself. Though, I wonder though if he's got that kind of I don't self reflection because yeah. was it he and Steve Smith that had beef? Yes. Yeah. I I I've known Steve for a long time. He's brash. I get it. I like him personally. Uh, his criticism, I thought, of Jerry Judy was very fair. The way Judy responded, I remember at the time thinking, you know what, I don't want him in an orange hat. I don't. Well, now he has a chance to turn that around. Right. And you know? so, but yeah. I, you touched on something that's very important. You said, if I'm Jerry Judy, I'm very embarrassed. Yeah. But either Jerry Judy was masking when he made his retort to Steve Smith's original criticism, which I thought was on point, but... Either he was masking it or he's completely head insane and he just doesn't believe it. Yeah. And yeah, I, I hope know. it's the first. I yeah. hope that I, I, I think he, he knows, and that's why he was so sensitive to that criticism. I, I think he, he knows it's true. It. But to Boy's point, you know, even if he is embarrassed, if, if I'm somebody that care about him, I'm letting that young man know right now there's a thing called humility before honor. And sometimes you got to take a step back or right. be embarrassed before you actually fulfill your potential. Well, that's but then good to advice. your point about, you know, him and Amari and Amari helping him as a man. I say, I say all the time, iron sharpens iron as one person better than another. Chad Johnson had the funniest analogy of this whole thing. He said, the Browns got two dudes from Dade County that's assassin route runners that create more separation than divorce attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong on any of that right. analysis, by the yeah, way. I mean, I, that, so, that is a good line. That's I, a ringing endorsement right there. I've never so, heard of that separation. Amari's got to talk to, you know, like, it's got to be about the consistency. Yeah. He's been an up and down player in his career. At the end of the 22 season, the last, I want to say the last six <laughs> weeks, I don't remember the exact time frame, was he had this great stretch and it was like, okay, here he goes. Yeah. And then and last year he had a disappointing do you, season. Do you point to Russell Wilson for any of I, I, the I Russell guess. Wilson experiment in Seattle, or I mean in Denver? Denver. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it kind of takes the Browns off the hook a little bit with the Deshaun Watson thing. I think this is – that what happened in Denver yeah. now has finality to it. it yes. It can never be a That's success. Right. Now, it will always be bookmarked as a colossal organizational fail. That is absolutely true, although I would argue Russell Wilson was better in Denver than Deshaun Watson has been to this point in Cleveland. That's true. I don't know. I just, all I see is $85 million. Every time I hear the Broncos now – well, the Browns million. might know. If, if Deshaun doesn't turn it around this year, we might see the same thing with the Browns next year. But yes, Could. with the Broncos, it's over. And with the Broncos, see, it was Deshaun an old... can still make it good. Yeah. Yes. The Broncos, you're talking about an older quarterback. So right. like, maybe they should have known better. With the Browns, there was every reason to believe. But, you know, that's it. One more thing on, on this in terms of, you know, whether he gets it because of the humiliation and, and will he be humbled and because he could turn his whole career around and become a great player. He could. It reminds me of, I know you're not a huge fan of the movie, but you'll like, you'll remember this part from Moneyball. Yeah. Okay. There was a scene where the players were starting to buy into the Moneyball stuff. And the one guy who wasn't was David Justice. Yeah. And Brad Pitt, uh, what character goes up to the guy, whoever the guy was. Billy Bean. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, um, you know, you might want to basically. You might want to come around here. The Yankees had to pay us to, to take, take you. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that that, that was kinda, a humbling moment. And it was like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I might yeah. not be the player I think I am. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I listen. I have all the hopes in the world that Jerry Judy becomes yeah. the player he can be. Um, I don't know him from Adam. I've never met him. I don't know what kind of person he is. Uh, I to your point earlier. You know, we were all twenty-four once, and God 
I, oh, I'm gosh. so glad that we weren't uh, judged under a public oh, microscope boy. for our maturity level. Yeah. I would have failed that test miserably. I probably too. would have failed that test at 34. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yes. It took yeah, me a minute. I'm with it took you me there. a minute for sure. But I'll say this. I think this is a good Petri dish for him to grow. Sure. Which I sure. wouldn't have said that five years ago about this organization. And, and realistically, what's the downside? <laughs> let's let's say he's just what he's been in his career and he has 783 yards. Well, it's still better than Elijah Moore. Yeah, you gave up a fifth and sixth. It's better than giving up two thirds right. of Schwartz and Bell. Yeah, right. That you got almost nothing, nothing. out yeah, of Yeah, exactly. So, all right, we're going to turn the page, right? 